Okay. All right, Greg, you're okay. to come to order. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to call to order the service committee meeting for November 6th of 2017. Uh, we have met Williams here, and uh, I would like to discuss the purchase or transfer of the Tahoe ex-police uh, car by People's Fire Department to enable them to uh, transport firefighters to various functions. Their membership has been increasing, and uh, they need vehicles of this nature. Matt, would you? Yeah, so uh, thanks thanks for uh, hearing me out tonight. Um, so a little background here. Uh, since I took over, uh, this will be my second year now as chief, our department has uh, grown uh, tremendously over the last year or so. We started out with uh, roughly a, a roster of maybe 15 active members showing up for calls, helping out with administration. Uh, with that said, we are happy to say that in the last year we have gained 10 interior firefighters, three administration members, bringing our status up to roughly 45 active volunteers now for our department. So again, thank you for the council for helping us with uh, recruitment and uh, the funding to help get some of these trucks on the road. With that said, um, we are kind of in a bind right now. We don't have enough vehicles to get some of these members to calls. We have members that are showing up to the station that we could use on a fire ground, but we don't have a vehicle for them to get there. And we are highly against them using their personal vehicle because of insurance reasons. Um, so what I'm asking for town council is to look at uh, the, the police department has retired a old uh, 2014 Sergeant's Tallhill, which is a four-wheel drive vehicle, which will be able to carry an additional five members for us to a scene or an emergency when needed. Now, the, the bind that we're in is, as everybody can see outside today, that truck took a big hit on our budget uh, for the next couple of years. So starting at the beginning of the year, uh, our allotment that we get from the town will be knocked off roughly around $75,000 right off the top. And then we also have a hit on our relief association that we also took a loan against. So we are gonna to get to the bare minimum. Our relief, I have to outfit roughly eight firefighters next year with turnout gear because the increase of members that have shown up, that has joined, uh, they have to be outfitted with the proper equipment. And that's gonna roughly cost me $20,000 at the beginning of the year. So what I'm asking tonight is if the town council would be willing to maybe transfer or donate that vehicle to help getting our members to the scene of an incident. I mean, we help the police department with road closures when needed as they're out and out getting road signs. Um, and we're trying to cut down on the wear and tear of the big trucks whenever the storm weather comes in, chasing wires down, trees down, um, and saving them for the real emergency <coughs> whenever there's a fire or an accident, anything like that. So. If that's something you guys could. What is the blue book on the Tahoe? Do you know that? That I don't know off of hand. Uh, it, I know I do know it has roughly ninety thousand miles on it. Do you know if it needs we'll repaint it or something? Um, at this point, we weren't even looking at repainting it. We were just going to use it as is. Uh, we would have to outfit it with emergency lights and sirens, and that's going to cost us roughly six to seven thousand dollars out of our relief association just to make it NFPA approved for uh, scene lighting. We are aware that, you know, there probably is some maintenance that we're going to have to put into it to get it on the road, being it has been sitting for a few months. Is there concern about having it properly identified if, it, if it's being used by the firefighters as opposed to the police? Well, right now there's no uh, markings on oh, the Oh, there's vehicle. no markings yeah, on The it. town takes all the markings off the patrol cars. Completely, okay. Yes. What's it doing, just sitting out there in one of the garages? Sitting in the lot out in the back yeah. of the building. Okay. And have we donated... Uh, vehicles before? No, we sell them. Council uh, authorized me a number of years ago to dispose of vehicles <coughs> by sale. Now, what he's making obviously is a special request, and uh, I had heard that you were interested in it, but I hadn't heard, heard it as a donation. <coughs> so I can't authorize a donation. But uh, this is a, a, a thought of consistency uh, because you know, other companies have, you know, bills and demands and so forth. So it's a you have to, it's something to think about before we uh, before you. It, it, it's, it's a great need to have all the firefighters you've got now. That's for sure. Yeah, this has been a fantastic year. We are very proud. Uh, 
Yeah. And we're, it's more, we're trying to keep it our goal to try to get at least two active firefighters in the year to keep keep the drive there because it, it's it's a up it's a roller coaster. Right now we have these members. Next couple of years we could be down members. Uh, speaking with some of the other fire chiefs in the area, Hampton Township has donated to their fire departments old police cars for fire police vehicles. Um, same with uh, Franklin Park has donated to uh, Alpha and Wildfire Company in Shaler Township, and they use it also to help get firefighters. When do we, assuming that we were inclined to approve such a transaction, when does it take place? Is that something, would we act on that tonight, or does that have to be waited upon until we... We don't even know how much this yeah. car is worth. Well, that's what I'm saying. But, 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 but I'm when trying. Would it be? Yeah, well, I'm just trying to make it yeah. work too, but it's too much. Too much. Yeah. Well, I don't know how much of a value you're going to get because it's a special service vehicle, so I don't know how they judge the blue book value on those. When we put them on Municibid, uh, we started doing that. Mark, just we just did it once, and we're about to do it again. No, we've sold several, but the, the Municibid. I mean, one year we did it. I mean, I don't yeah, think it, yeah. but we've done it a couple of years. Well, again, uh, the question I was about to the value ask, could be, it, you know, and I'm not asking the value, I'm simply saying the mechanics, assuming those hurdles are overcome, when is, is such a transaction properly authorized? Because that's it's a what, donation, I think you'd have to do it at the business meeting. That's what I thought. And vote okay. on it. Uh, the question about value, uh, with Municibid, uh, it's an interesting, it's a, you can bid up until the last second. And uh, it, it has driven the price up. But in fairness, I think if, if we sell it to uh, certainly one of our own, I, as I started out by saying when we were talking informally, we have done it at a discounted rate. The, you know, there, there's got to, I think, perhaps a balance here uh, to have some consistency. Uh, because if, I think if council were to give an outright donation, even though you've had, you've had great success, and that's, that's the real reason for this, uh, then I think it's going to be something that could be considered a precedent. So uh, just some, some thought, and we should get a value. It's, you know, we can get the blue book value easily enough. You know, almost any of us can do it. However, our mechanics do a good job because they can adjust what it's, what it's worth because they're the ones that have been maintaining it, and they can help put a, put a, put a look at the Kelly blue book, look at some other sources, and then you know, put their, their 10 cents worth in on how much, how, what the value is. So I just, just some known factors would be helpful. So I had a, a couple of questions. Um, I didn't know this was going to come up. Um, uh, was the value and how much the repairs? You said the mechanic needs to look at and see how many. Were you? Are we? You expecting us to pick up the repairs? Yeah, no, we would. We would okay. take on the repairs. Okay. Uh, we have mechanics in house that we, we fix all of our equipment. And the conversion. Uh, that we would do, uh, we'd have to pay a vendor, and like I said, uh, a starting price of that is roughly seven to eight thousand okay. dollars off the bat. That we would have to take out of our relief association. Okay, but we wouldn't be doing that. No, you. Okay. The only thing we are asking from the town would be the vehicle. Okay. The people's district would take on the expenses of everything else. Now, my question is, if we retired the vehicle, that means that we didn't want to keep it because we didn't think it was a good vehicle, I guess. So good for daily no. patrol. Good for daily police patrol. Mm. But we retired it. No, no, but somebody used the word retired. I didn't. It's oh. not retired. Oh. I mean, we, it, it, it's that's taken it, out of service. It's, out, it's, out, it, it, it's out of service for as a police vehicle. So what we what we do is uh, when there ordinarily are four, sometimes five police vehicles that are taken out of service, right. replaced with new vehicles. The, the uh, then an assessment is made of the administrative vehicles for zoning and administration as a general vehicle, which also serves as a backup to anybody. The vehicle I drive, when someone else is going to a conference anywhere, they take that vehicle, I use one of the leftover vehicles during that period. So generally it's the administrative, what's called, we call the administrative vehicle. We take usually the best of the bunch to keep for ourselves to keep, because sometimes when there have been some really big emergencies, the police have had to take that vehicle back, put a bubble light on it, and use that because so it's still so it's it's, it's still that type of vehicle because they they are interceptor vehicles police interceptor vehicles so then w whatever the remaining vehicles are we sell them when we've been approached over the many years uh, by the uh, we've been approached by our ambulance authority we sold the vehicle to them either earlier this year or last year uh, 
Highlands bought from us. I, I believe Ingemar has too. I you guys may have bought from us. I'm not sure. No, we never have. But the vehicles that they have bought and have all been either like fire marshal vehicles that are already outfitted with emergency lights. So we're right. starting from scratch and getting a vehicle with nothing in it. And that's where the expense is coming. Like I said, we, we took a, a huge hit uh, and we knew we were going to take a huge hit, you know, trying to get this piece of apparatus into service. Uh, we just didn't expect our membership to grow as quickly as it did. And it's, it's just, it's not doing the town any good having five, five other interior firefighters sitting at a fire station that they can be on scene helping. Why don't we figure out what the value is, have our mechanics put a, a better price on it, get back, report back to council, and then uh, some, uh, maybe there's a, because of the extenuating circumstance, especially because of the rapid growth, that's unprecedented. I mean, we're... I found three of them for $25,000. It's not in the blue book. It's just on selling, but... But, uh, well, it, when they're police vehicles... No, they, I know. They, they're they, less. They, I, I they're know. worth less. But, so we can, we can get a good number, and then uh, we have discounted them to uh, other agencies uh, because based on what the mechanics say, they know that it could be mechanically wrong or could be a problem down the road. So I think we take all that into consideration. It might be a fairly modest number, and then... Uh, Sometimes what we've done even with the athletic associations, when they need uh, uh, help with, uh, and they don't have enough money for fundraising, uh, we put them on a deferred payment plan. I think probably just, a, I think so, it's just not a total gift. It might be, I'm sounding like a manager now rather than a council member perhaps, but uh, just, uh, it might be better to have some, some value assigned to it. Okay. Real quick, I'll make it brief. I just want to elaborate on something the Chief said. They do help us a lot. And more firefighters that get in a critical incident to a scene, they do things that help us to relieve us to be able to, in case we get called to something else. And um, what, he, what I'm hearing from the chief is he wants to transport bodies to the scene of an emergency. So I, I, I do, you guys are very good at helping us, and I appreciate that. Thank you, chief. Thank you. Now, if we, <clears throat> excuse me, if we donate or give or however you want to describe it, with this fire company, then would we be obligated to do that with the other fire companies? I thought, I'm, I'm suggesting it might be considered precedent setting. If I was one of the other fire chiefs, I'd say, you know, hey, when's my turn? But, yeah, but I, again, I don't, I don't mean to be uh, br uh, brusque about it, but I think there's this reality of what is value, and then this, certainly this growth set a lower value, perhaps, to take the, there's some mitigating circumstances here, and, and in, uh, the chief's right, Ordinarily, if there's life left in the old fire marshal's vehicle uh, or the uh, building inspector's vehicle, which are equipped, as he says, with, with the type of emergency lighting they can use, uh, that's, that's what the sale has, has usually been. So there, there's, there's, there's several factors there that are, are but certainly But we're not mitigating. ready for new cars with those two, are we? No. Oh, no. Not yet. So when did we buy our police cars for this year? Uh, they were delivered, uh, final delivery. Chief, you probably know better. You would know yeah, better. Mid-year. Mid okay. Right. And, and how many of the old cars do we still have sitting around? Mark, four. How many do we still have here? The same out there that are out of There's two Tahoes, a Ford Explorer, two hot Tahoes, a Taurus, and an Explorer, I think. I thought we sold, I thought in our budget when we were looking at that, we were looking at how much we were buying and then what it was costing us to buy them, and then how much we were going to make on the other ones that we were going to sell. When we, we didn't sell them. When we sell them, we take that as revenue. That doesn't count as a, a net price. The price that's in the budget for police cars is the purchase price. But we do have a revenue, and I've asked, I've asked Mark, let's, it's time to crank up in this a bit. Maybe it's a good thing he didn't because we may not be able to have this conversation. It might have been gone. And that's why I jumped on it because uh, I've heard that they were getting ready to go on a minute a bit, and I didn't. Didn't want to miss on an opportunity. Well, for what it's worth, as far as I'm concerned, if, if a not right donation is out of the question, I think uh, some creative financing should be uh, <coughs> put in play here to uh, to uh, reduce whatever the purchase price might happen to be for them, especially since they do their own in-house uh, mechanical work. We can look at some creative planning. Yeah. 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 Any other comments? Just, well, if I could, just quick, I just looked up Kelly Blue Book. And a, a commercial Tahoe with 90,000 miles on it is worth about 14,000. Kelly Blue Book. Perfect.
But since we weren't prepared to, to look back and see what we got, because we do have records from what we have received on bids, uh, we used to take the vehicles to auction, and uh, we got, uh, uh, I, Mark and I talked, I said, Mark, we got to try municipal bid. I'm, I'm hearing success stories, and it, it, it was significantly successful, proportionately more successful to bid on the municipal bid. A little bit of a, uh, there, there's a little bit of work involved because the mechanics have to, folks have to stop by to kick the tires. What and does municipal bid take? Is there a percentage? Or we just pay them? Mark, I'm, I'm not aware of an administrative charge, are you? I don't think there is. It's a service, state months. It's great. It's a great service. So let's we'll let it, we have some facts together. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, thanks a lot, Matt. Thanks, you. Uh, next thing on the agenda is the uh, fire marshal's report. Is Dan stuck there? Dan is away. And I would suggest on that item, uh, the only reminder I have is the upcoming uh, banquet. On the 18th. On the 18th. Okay. Right. Six o'clock. And that's to his report uh, when he returns. That's, that's uh, a Chadwick right? Yeah, that's a Chadwick. Chadwick at six o'clock, Saturday the 18th. Okay. If you haven't let Melinda know, I, I imagine she could still take your reservation, so. Okay. Uh, Next item is the uh, review of the budget program 411. Yes, please. Okay. I went over it carefully with them. You can call it up. You're, you're looking for your. Yeah. Budget. Dan's laptop, it's on page, uh, sorry, the overall uh, remarks and, and description of the program, and as, as we know, as we're now delving into each of these, uh, this is a program budget. Uh, the, each program talks about a type of service that we offer and how that service is supported, uh, usually, usually by a town department or departments, and sometimes in, in conjunction with, with contracted services. And of course, in this case, uh, Dan has, uh, himself and he has an assistant. We have the, uh, our building inspector uh, does some work as a uh, uh, deputy fire marshal, uh, reviews plans and so forth. Uh, Dan's, <coughs> Dan's credentials qualify him as a fire marshal. Uh, he's not a plan reviewer. That takes a very detailed additional set of credentials which Jeff Frazier does have. So he can sign off. Dan does a great job of reviewing plans. He's just not, he doesn't sign off on them. Uh, on page 35, the objectives we list under each program for specific items that, that, that I and Reg, I said myself first because I'm, I'm, I'm the one that submits the budget. Reg does yeoman work in presenting it after gathering all the information from the department <coughs> and, and getting my input. Uh, so there's a summary under each of the programs. Some of them are short, some of them are longer. This one has a, a reference to account 260. The account numbers, uh, when you see a two at the beginning of the account number, that means it's an item, a commodity. So uh, Dan is talking about that his laptop is, uh, is older and tired, and laptops, and the main reason why laptops uh, are, fall out of service is because of uh, their capacity. And so uh, Dan's is uh, due for replacement. He has a program that he wants to load on it, and also on his computer here that will really, uh, he and I had a good session on it, enable him to, when he inspects uh, login information, uh, have standard uh, letter, basically uh, when he's done with an inspection, he'll be able to uh, hand somebody <coughs> a copy or have it all, have it all input and it's, it'll, it'll follow a template and that'll save him some time. So for $4,300, I thought that was a, a pretty good idea. Uh, the 460 uh, account, is a, uh, a training for training, and that is a training on the new software and other, there's, there's other meetings and conferences that Dan uh, would attend as well. He's permitted to attend uh, our policy department heads and I are in Reach or uh, 
encouraged to attend one significant conference a year for, for professional training. We have continuing education hours. We have to meet Dan, certainly does to keep his credentials up. And at smaller conferences, we, you know, we have uh, budget room for that. 5.30, if you see a 5 in front of a, an account number, that means it's a, uh, a program that, uh, that is for, uh, it's kind of a special classification. You'll see that 500 number for donations and contributions to athletic associations when we look at that part of the budget later in the month. And so this five, uh, 530 account is, is our special program that uh, Chief uh, Williams uh, alluded to that uh, is uh, helped to, uh, with the growth of his company. This Step Up program was founded uh, 20 years ago and it's still running strong. Uh, and the, the, a lot of the fruits of that labor you see when we have the, uh, the banquet and the, there's the golf outing in summer and then for the family, the, the firefighters family, and friends that we have the Ketty Wood or baseball game or some other kind of event. We talked about going to the zoo as a possible alternative. So that falls under that category. Uh, you can see where the contributions also are there for each company. Uh, what we've done fairly steadily since the, re, the last reassessment, we broke away from connecting the donation or contribution of, from the town to help the fire companies with their operating budgets. We've broken away from a, a link to the property tax. We have had an outright amount of money that, that first year that we broke away, we just converted what we were giving in real estate tax and the town added a percentage. I don't know what that in increases off the top of my head that year we did it, but there, there's a, uh, a, an exhibit in the back that shows the history of all these contributions, uh, I believe, since, it's, since they started. We're suggesting the council follow the path that uh, what Reg and I have put in the budget generally is uh, if, if there's no known increase about a specific expenditure <coughs> for inflation or so forth, we, we've used 3%. The fire companies have been uh, happily uh, receiving a 3% increase for the last uh, at least several years. So that would take a 3% increase, would go uh, take their contribution per company from 150,900 150, to 155,400. Uh, one last comment here, uh, the town relieves, uh, receives a, a, a large uh, uh, check from the state for the uh, Relief Association, uh, which Matt also, Matt Williams also alluded to, uh, that those funds are used for a variety of features that protect the firefighter largely, and equipment, especially personal equipment, he mentioned that as well, about how his Relief Association allocations going to be significantly uh, dedicated to uh, outfitting some of these new firefighters. I think he said there was going to be eight. Yes, I, the note I made was eight. So uh, when this money comes, we receive it and it's a pass-through. We don't, all we do is by law, we have to, we have to receive it and then pass it on. And uh, that's shown on page 37 after these other contributions. We're, we're budgeting about $200,000. That's, it's been averaging uh, in the 190s to the low 200s this past year. Uh, the state must have sold, there must have been less insurance from outside insurance companies sold to Pennsylvania because our allocation was 185.6. That's uh, one of the lower numbers I've seen. Hmm. That's the relief? The, yep. The yeah, insurance that Ford Fire relief. Insurance, that's the, it's, it's called Ford Fire Insurance because that's the, that's the tax that the state imposes, the four Two percent. It's a two percent tax on all okay. insurance transactions that are carried out on in state. Pennsylvania by companies from out of state. Out of state. Hence the word foreign. Anything outside Pennsylvania they consider foreign under this. So we get that check, we, we have to sign it over to the Relief Association within a certain number of days and that just, it just, that's it, it's just a pass through. It inflated the size of our budget, but that's, that's the way it goes. We, we have custody of it for, for about two days. Otherwise, otherwise there's really nothing uh, that I, I could point out is unusual in uh, the, the fire marshal's budget, Mr. Chairman. Okay, any comments? I just thought of one more thing to uh, maybe have information available when we discuss about this Tahoe again. Is, is how much of their um, money that they have, what savings that they have, how much of that money, because he said it was going to really break into that, but just to see how much money they have. 
Chief, left. you're still here. Yes. Did you just I, come back I, in? I thought you, no, you no, moved. No. I, th I thought you left. Everything I said was, okay. was accurate, right? Yes. Thank you. So, <laughs> yeah, so, I, hope, um, I hope so, because it was Once you guys me. receive, um, the release committee breaks it down even again. So we roughly only get like sixty thousand dollars out of them. You get a third. Of the yeah. Problem. You're talking about the relief association. Yes, the relief. Yes. Yeah. Now, so when we when we allocate, if council agrees to a three percent increase, each fire company getting one fifty five four. Matt's correct. The the resolution that governs the loan of money from the town on for apparatus uh, requires that we take those funds out of their allocation before they receive their the rest of their operating money so uh, we don't we don't have to go back and say hey guys you're you're falling in arrears and payments Bradley to go through any of that and everybody agrees that's you know that's that's a good way to do it but when they have a big purchase like they've made they, they've taken a big plunge here that's his obviously your point yes, is how much do you have left what you know what, where, what are your balances it might be helpful if you wouldn't mind uh, letting us know what your fund balance is. I know our, our, uh, our relief balance, uh, we're down to like $2,000, because again, we had to outfit a lot of members last year, including the, the payment we took out for the truck. We took the loan and stuff, so we took a majority. You of put it. a down payment down on the truck from your Correct. funds on hand. Yes. So all you have is $2,000? Out no. of our relief account. Okay. That, that's the account, yeah. that foreign fire cash okay. that has nothing to do really yeah. with the town. Yeah, okay. I'd have to see what we have left from the town um, I don't know that off the top of my head, but uh, we just had to, uh, it's probably going to be slim because we had to do emergency repairs to our roof. We had a big hole come in when one of the storms came through. It cost us $56,000 right off the bat to do a roof, You know, which we didn't budget for this year. You, as you're talking about mitigating circumstances, those kinds of things, please, if you know this is a, a time for disclosure of that kind of information, That'll help council make this decision. Yeah, that's why. That's why we came to you. Normally, we don't come asking for this no. things, but it's just we kind of. You paid for the roof. Yes, out of the out of the funds that we received from the town, we take okay. it out of our allocation. How much did you get from your for your old piece? Your old uh, yeah, actually, that just sold uh, on Monday, or on Sunday. We sold it to a company in Iowa, and we started out at a price of eighty thousand dollars. We end up only getting forty thousand dollars out of it. That's not unusual. What was the year? Uh, 1994. It's, yeah. it's not a, it's the market's kind of flooded with emergency vehicles right now, so people aren't willing to pay, you know, what the truck is actually worth. <laughs> so you guys had it appraised at 80? Yes, we had an appraisal. Yeah. So that happens. Any other comments? Any comments from the uh, public? Okay. This I uh, here. I like to uh, adjourn the services uh, committee meeting. Public safety. I'll go uh, <clears throat> up on the public safety committee meeting. Move to uh, item number two on the agenda. That's the chief's report. Chief, would you uh, kindly take the microphone? Good evening. Uh, you've got a copy of the report for the monthly activity report for October 2017 from the Kansas Police Department. I've received uh, a lot of positive input about the report itself, about the third and the seventh, and uh, a lot of the public have been commenting to me saying they can do a joint report. In the interest of time you have it, I'll highlight a few things. Um, Dan Stack and I met with the head of the Allegheny County Emergency Coordinator and developed training in the future, and part of that training is going to be uh, training for council. They are going to use, they're going to try to set something up a venue for all local government entities to understand the concept of the emergency management and what their role is. And uh, we're going to try to coordinate that in January for here. I believe it's a two-hour course, uh, and I, I think it'll be beneficial. And he also reviewed our current plan, which I've updated, and he approved the plan and said that the plan is good. So we're, we're, we're in good shape. Uh, Detective Egley uh, coordinated and participated in the drug initiation take back. We uh, took in about uh, 14 boxes weighing about 270 pounds of expired medication, so it was a very, very good day. I'd like to thank everybody who uh, came to the collection site. A couple of things. I want to commend uh, Officer David Martin. 
to his attention to detail. He was on his way to work off duty and he recognized and detained a wanted actor that he saw walking through North Park where we had had a felony warrant uh, for and I, I thought he did a good job. I wanted to mention that. Um, a lot of fun things you get to do as police chief and one of them was I got to read to the doodlebugs, the kids at the school at the, at the daycare center. Uh, it's the annual uh, read to children and uh, it, it, was, it was very, very nice and, and uh, get to do this type of thing is very, very enjoyable. Um, at the recent uh, government meeting at Cogman with the chief, we talked about the use of, as, as a police department, a savvy citizen. So I'm going to put it out something shortly. The Facebook page has been really, really well received and we're communicating well with people. The Savvy Citizen will give us another ability to communicate in a good way with our citizens, but more expedient manner if we have something that is, is involved in that that people need to know right away, like an emergency or a road closure or such. So we are going to use that. We want people to know that if we have Facebook, we want to educate them that we are going to use that as part of what communicating. Uh, I've scheduled a coffee with the cops November 14, 2017 from 10 to 11 a.m. I did this uh, in my tenure uh, in Oakmont. It was uh, always very, very successful. We're going to try to make it different times. We're going to have this one during the day, maybe a couple in the evening. Try to do it maybe quarterly. It's just a meet and greet with the good citizens of the community. And the last thing I'll uh, transition into, and this will go to uh, transitioning into the budget, is due to the retirement we have uh, a lieutenant's position with that in mind, there, there are things that need to be happening, which you saw in my notes. Um, first, we need to hire an officer to replace the vacancy. And we do have an ask, active list, and I would act that we would uh, you know, get ready and, and schedule interviews. Uh, secondly, um, there will be a promotion uh, for a lieutenant's position and a promotion from a sergeant's position. So I will talk about that. We have a plan to accomplish that, and I'm asking counsel to uh, assist me in that so we can uh, get going and get our department to where we need to be. Respectfully, that's all I have tonight. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Chairman, Chief, uh, the, the emergency management plan, I, you, I know you were meeting with uh, the county chief of emergency, and uh, you, uh, in our last conversation, you were updating the plan and uh, working with our fire marshal tell you we're telling you how, how wonderful he's to work with and so forth so uh, and then when we left it was uh, the council has to sign off on the two-year update is that that still stands yeah, that's correct it's due to be signed up uh, it was updated Daniel uh, Dan Stack and I work really well together we've got a really really good plan the head of the emergency manager came out with us sat down in my office personally reviewed it he liked what we're doing and then we had discussion about uh, even branching out and making sure that uh, council would be educated on what their role is. I know there have been interested in people, Councilman Zachary has been interested in that, and he would define that and be able to, uh, you know, to, in a, to his training, be able to say what exactly the role is of council. So, does, does the NIMS training still exist? This, this would be, uh, yeah, it would be a NIMS compliant training for council, and it, it, it tells them what their, what their roles are. Uh, and it's, it's a good thing. I think it, uh, so we're looking at looking forward to doing that. And, and we're going to try to pick a date in January that works for everybody. So they have to take tests. Those that didn't take that test have to take it. I'm sorry? Do those who did not take the test have to take it? Uh, Consul, from what I talked to, there is a requirement that, yes, to answer your question, there is a, uh, a, a test that has to be taken. Uh, by we all took it. Good. Okay, well then you're... Before. Before. Okay. Three new ones, yeah. Yeah. I don't think. Well, the, the, is, that, is that what I took? That's when you took when you got on. It's new information. Everyone should <laughs> test. Yeah, it really does help council understand, you know, the, what the plan and, and your well, role, but when, when the, the, there, there is a requirement that you, at least there was, and she's confirming that there still is a requirement that you take an exam. There's a study guide which can be, you can make yourself, you can avail yourself before you hit the computer and, and take the test. Toby, did I hear you say a moment ago that everybody has taken that test? Oh, Jerry, the people on council have. Well, I don't think that's true. Right. No, 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 no. When the test was administered, we all took it. Previously. Yes. Previously. I, it was a, It was on. A, you took it online. Yes. And it yeah. generated a certificate if you passed. Yes. And it was not an easy test. Let me tell you that. No, we have to take it. Yeah. 
But this is an updated plan, so it would be new information. So that old, everyone would, would need to retake the test. I, would I don't think. know about that, no. I, don't well, I, think, no. I think those who had the test before probably have the certification. We ought to clarify that with the county EMC. But there are, there are four council members who would have to go through, have to go through the training and, uh, and take the test. Now, we'll see if the other three existing council members uh, This training will prepare you have for that. To. It's more on a national level. Well, one will not have to, for sure. Make that two. There'll be five that have to. Jerry's still good at his, his, his certification is still coming. We wouldn't make him take his test for, an, for two months anyhow. Good, good, good. He's already passed. And the chief alluded to uh, some information. Uh, the uh, it's, some, it's some later breaking news. As he mentioned, the uh, retirement of Lieutenant Nebel has triggered sort of a, uh, a chain reaction. So uh, Reeves and the chief and I worked today as we were prepping for our meeting tonight. And so whenever, the, the, I think I'll, I'll, I'll back up to the when, the when the chief wants to introduce more information. But just so you know, you do have a small paragraph in front of you that Reeves uh, prepared a synopsis of how a plan could work uh, on the replacement schedule. Back to you, Chief, I think as long as the chairman yeah, it's, okay. it's pretty simplistic. What I've asked for is a replacement program. We have two officers in the drop, and we do need uh, promotions now. So uh, Reeves was nice enough. We sat down today and worked, worked through it. And actually, what I, you know, the dynamics of, of the town have changed, so we need to keep the force at, at full strength. What we found out through what we can do with the retirement of the lieutenant is what, what we would like to do, and you have it in black and white in front of you, is, is the replacement program. If you, in fact, hire a patrol officer, the dates are set, we have a time period, and then a promotion of a lieutenant, the time period is also specified in the notes there, a promotion of a sergeant, and then another hiring of another patrolman, um, in probably like late, late, in late July or August. And by doing that, Reeves was good enough and I was, uh, I, w I was happy to see it. The numbers is it's, uh, it's basically a wash for the budget. So it's going to be at no expense. I think we looked outside of the box and became creative. And, uh, um, you know, I, I think that it's, 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 it's a very, very good plan. And then we have a replacement plan because inevitably, these officers are leaving and we need command staff officers and then we can bring other officers on and have them well prepared for when they exit that we'll be prepared and financially um, it's not gonna it's really not gonna uh, be costly and so I think it's uh, I think it's a very advantageous to look at this very serious and that is my proposal that's probably the, the main thing with the budget to look at. but yet it's really not a budgetary concern because when the numbers were worked out uh, in the replacement, um, we're really kind of ahead of the game. It will come out of wash, or we may come out a little bit, uh, a little bit benefit. Actually, we'll, we'll come out ahead, so to speak, uh, in 2018. But then, if, if the uh, second officer is hired in uh, mid-year July, as you said, July, perhaps even August, depending on how that schedule works. But uh, then, then in 2019 would be. Uh, enough money would have to put in to cover that person's salary. We would have saved some money in 18 because uh, junior officers now taking the place of the lieutenant on the rolls. So the, the difference actually comes out to about $6,500 in net over two years. For two Wait. years? Over two years. Where we, would, we are additional, by bringing that second person on board mm -hmm. in July mm -hmm. of 18 and then O'Connor leaving in September, September of 19. Uh, when you put the funds together, the, uh, the Reach has 67,000. It says he completes his drop on September of 18, not 19. September just, he's, saying, she's, he's saying the year. That's what I'm saying. No, his here. drop ends on 19. Okay, I'm, I'm just looking at the email that you sent us, and it just says Lieutenant O'Connor, who completes his drop on September 30th, 2018, produces. An estimated additional cost of about six thousand. That should be nice. Should be nice. I'm just trying to do I'm just trying to make the math work. My yeah. memo says September 30th of 2019. She's saying the email. She's I'm saying the email. Yeah. The, the, the email that I got. 
September 20, so I'm just 30th, trying to see which is right. Would we select these new people from those that we've already interviewed, or would no. we have to go through those? No, we have a, you have a current list that's okay, so certified, so that that we, you could begin. That's going to uh, benefit. We, that, that is a benefit, and we okay. do have some uh, you know, good candidates, so we do have a list. So uh, that's why I'm hoping that I think it's a realistic goal that we could have an officer hired by February. And we'd only have to interview two other people, right? That's correct. And then you, you could select one out of the three uh, as, as corresponding. Yeah, we, we, we talked about this. The chief brought this up maybe uh, with, with as soon as Lieutenant Nebel said he was going to end his drop. Uh, and, and then we, we, didn't crunch, we didn't crunch the numbers then. But uh, so now with this information and uh, as, in, in this Timing it this way, uh, basically almost as a wash duck point. When Reach came up with the numbers and I got the email, I was pleasantly, pleasantly surprised. I, I had done some of it, but I, 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 I think it's a very advantageous, very good thing at, at, at no cost at this particular time. And you know, you got to when you move the department forward and you have promotions, it creates an energy and, and, and it, it creates an incentive. People that have been working hard have an opportunity to now move and become part of the command staff. And that's always a good thing for the department. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, do we, do we Thank you. Do we have any other question or comment regarding the uh, chief's explanation of the personnel level? All right, let's move on then to... Uh, Review the budget programs number 410 and 419. So Thank you, Chief. If you, Chief, if you have a, that's a, a synopsis of, the, of those items from uh, yeah, page it, 31. So a police budget is, is basically a repeat maintenance budget um, with, with, with some replacements that have been needed. And, and I take great pride uh, in being fiscally responsible. And, and we looked at there are some things that we did need which are which are indicated. We have some technological equipment that needs to be replaced that basically has become obsolete. So we you know we address we address that I address that. It's pretty self explanatory what uh, what what that is. Uh, the DVD in card, the laptops and the in card camera videos. Uh, the particular uh, camera that we have at the end of 2018, we're already patching them together. The parts were, uh, won't be available. For them. And of course, uh, the, the uh, cameras in a police vehicle are very, very important for a lot of reasons to protect uh, the safety of the citizens, uh, the community, uh, the, the officers from liability and stuff. So, like I said, there's really nothing in there. There's no fluff in the budget. It's just basically maintenance uh, projects to, re to replace what we need to keep uh, uh, operating a professional uh, police department. You know, there's, there's really nothing that, that's pretty much my explanation. A couple of new things, uh, office equipment, uh, the squad room, uh, there's a, a, a need for some additional computers there, so those are new. And Chief, the, 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 the laptops, they're new too, right? Yes. How long will these last for, do you think? You know, that's, uh, the life expectancy of the, is about, it, it depends with the laptops and the video cameras. I'd say the video cameras were looking at like five years. But you know, Council Emerge, technology changes so much <coughs> that they recommend they get better and better. But I would say five years for the, for the uh, cameras, which is usual life expectancy, and for the laptops, uh, maybe three or five years. What do we do with them? What do we do with them? They become town property, and uh, <coughs> basically, though, the in, in cameras that we have in the patrol cars are obsolete. They're of no use. Uh, we can't even get parts from I don't think they even have any value. The laptops just become, they just wear out. Right. Know, so, and just electronic recycling. Well, I didn't know if we can move it into your car to see how fast you were driving and how many red lights you were going. <coughs> wondered we have 15 police cars is that right if what's the maximum officers that we have on at any one time uh, we can have between uh, on duty we can have between like 
five and, and a good night five and nine. Okay. Uh, we have a we have a minimum, but we also have details constantly that we use those vehicles for. Like we had the pen dot paving, so we had two to three vehicles out there. We have the we have the center. We have a lot of size details, and we also have a maintenance cycle. Uh, I looked at the, I looked at the the, the, the uh, fleet because I know last year you asked. I remember I just just come in, and I I think that we are uh, we've had the same number of cars that I can see for about eight eight years. Nothing has changed. But I do think we. Do. And I think we need them because we have a rotation and we work with, with the mechanics. That that police car is the office for that for that officer. We have to make sure that it's maintained and it's it's safe and it's uh, you know, a good vehicle. One of the things we're talking about, you know, you want to you want to read or do the data study show. When you have a vehicle, a police vehicle, and it says fifty thousand miles, it's like a hundred thousand miles between the idling time and how hard they're run. Uh, there really is uh, at that particular time. They need to be, you know, they need to be retired. So we're, I did look at it. I looked at it. I don't think we have too many, and I don't think we have too less. I think we're we should be. And three are unmarked. Well, three, three of them are unmarked. Yeah, yeah, which we use for, for traffic, for surveillance, and, and such. And we have good uses for those. So you could have actually all of them <coughs> out at any one point then. Yes, oh. absolutely. Oh, okay. In a critical incident, we we actually. Doing the history, that's why cars were added because when we had an incident, there wasn't enough cars to transport your, your people. You have the special ops vehicle too. Yes. Which is a uh, picked up on federal surplus. Yeah, it, it was. It doesn't. It didn't cost a. We just we just, we just modified it. Yeah, and it's uh, it's been good for us. I, I do really uh, appreciate it, and I, I do I do try to take this as responsible. I have a good reputation for that. Yeah, I'm I'm frugal. And you can ask my wife; that is the truth. And I, I also mm -hmm. frugal with the taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. So much. Is your wife watching? She might be watching. Yeah. <laughs> TV. I mean, that's scary. She's not clear. She's not lying. It's memory. <laughs> All right, we're in the uh, 410 section at, uh, of the uh, public safety budget. Are, are there any, uh, any, anything that jumps off the page that we should be uh, alerted to that we haven't been uh, alerted to yet, or just pretty much ABC? Well, pretty much there. We do have, uh, Reach uh, gave me a note right before the meeting, we did receive a, uh, a draft of our uh, actuarial valuation. Uh, it, it's, it's a draft, but uh, it's, it's good news, so it's, it's, it's probably not premature to say this. When you look on, your, on page 32, uh, pension, the uh, we, we figured the general fund under our last valuation, which is we had the budget under that, that's still in existence, but we can adopt the new valuation. Uh, so it's showing 429700 is our current MMO. We have until the December business meeting under law to revise it if, if it makes sense to do so. And it appears it's going to because the draft uh, valuation shows it at 379446 which is $50,000 less. That's because of our of the investments, uh, and we also received some additional state aid, but uh, overall it's uh, performing well. So should be able to show a reduction there. And uh, PennDOT has been extremely busy. The chief has had his guys, as he said, those cars are out on outside detail a lot. That's the big driver in, in making that number. I had one question. The uh, under item 180, we uh, deferred compensation. We're cruising along at in the three thousand dollar range, and then all of a sudden we dropped to four hundred. What? Uh, how, how does that work? I'm sorry, I don't. Uh, I don't. 
comprehend why there's such a disparity there between those numbers. Regis, can I do that? That's deferred compensation for the police chief. So the previous police chief over the years, council had approved an increase in deferred compensation. Now we have a new police chief who hasn't been here that long. Okay. Okay, so as you may recall, in lieu of raise in the past, council granted deferred compensation to certain employees. That is correct, uh, that recollection. Thank okay. you. Thank you for the explanation. Any other member of council have a question regarding the uh, public safety budget in, under 410? If not, we'll move to section 49. If four, I could, just quick question yeah. on 410. Would council like me to uh, amend this budget uh, for the staffing that uh, Chief DeSaini discussed with you? I think that would be appropriate. Then at least we could see where the it will result in yeah, that cost. does work out if that's not Again, it. Again, because we had budgeted for a full complement of officers, right. including a lieutenant for 12 months next year, and that's changed now since we had a lieutenant retire this year. But it will only go up $6,500. That's over the three-year period. Um, just for next year, well, just for next year, um, the budget will go down, I think it's 20, would my memo say 26 or something, $26,000? 235 235 23, so for 2018 it'll go down $23,500 for personnel costs <coughs> we'll change certainly the certainly be right so yeah that's, thank you I mean that's that is that's, that's fact he's he's retired so a patrol officer the, the whole I guess your point is is that the proposal is that we try to get this person on board by February 1st to replace the tenant that's we, what's been outlined that's right. Yeah. So that so that'll help you in determining, you know, that this program is going to stand the way you propose. Right. We'll, we'll budget that way, and then whatever happens. Get them actually on duty on the road by February first. I. Uh, we only have to interview two people, in addition to all the other people you have to interview. But I mean, it's just two. Mm -hmm. And it's important. I mean, it's a police officer, so I mean, if you can. Yeah, no, I think it, we need to do it. I mean, do your, if you do your interviews, and in, uh, even in early January, you still. Uh, Chief works on the MOPEC certification. It's, it's conceivable that somebody can Seems be on board on February 1. If they're not on the road by February 1st, then actual expenses will be less than the budget. Less. It seems, seems like we should try to do it before a month before they're supposed to start. Sure. Just, There's a lot of testing and examinations they have to go through. No, no, the testing is done. done. These are people on the list. These are already ready to go. They're, they're, the, what's next is a uh, uh, the chief to do a little bit more background investigation, as he told me today. But, what are they going to give and then us? Bring them in for us? interview. What are they going to do? Recommend seven names or something again, and we can pick from those seven. For no, three. you left. Yeah, well, you did five for three. Right. Did two. two. You need two. Right, we did that originally. I was wondering if we we're going to go back through that yeah. process. No, you, two you, to get you one. You need actually two interview more. one person, one more person, because there's two sitting on hold. So you have to. You have one interview to do coming up here for this 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 slot, and then if you follow this outline. The plan that we've outlined it was July 1st would be the second, so sometime in spring you would interview the next person, unless you want to interview them s sooner, and then if you really like them, you could say, look, we're gonna, we want you to come, put you on a, on a defer, you can go clean up what you have to do as your current employer, start here on July 1st. There's, so there's some options out there. And there's the two sitting on hold are both veterans, correct? Correct. Well, that, that's right. The next two are veterans. So then the third one we'd almost have to choose as a veteran. Your your next person, if you hire, and if there's a veteran amongst the three, which so I'm saying, I'm saying our next interview, our third interview. Our next interview will be a that, that person a is a veteran. He is a veteran. Okay. I just so want to make sure they're all on even ground there. So the, the ground is set by law, and if you when you just because you interview, you don't have to hire. But if you decide to hire, out of the three, you've interviewed two. That third person you're going to interview is a veteran. If you decide to hire that person, then you have to. If you decide to hire, you have to hire that person. All right, but at that point, all three are going to be veterans. No. No, they're not. He no. said they were, but no, they're not. There are two that are non-veterans. Non-veterans. The okay. next two to be interviewed veterans. are veterans. He's I'm sorry, but okay. yeah. yeah. I, I guess I didn't make that clear. I'm sorry.
Okay, we'll move on to the uh, school crossing guard program, 419. Chief, anything interesting that we need to be concerned about there? No, I, I think it's just, you know, a real thing. Like, they do a nice job. Yeah, that's a tough job. They're they do. Here, you know, they're out there in the climate weather, and uh, they have kind of very support with the students, and it's just um, built in, uh, you know, part of it, as I said, the maintenance of uh, budget. What is electricity? The crossing guard. The flashing, the flashing lights. The, the flashing the lights. School zone signals. Oh, okay. Thank and the you. Uh, school district pays for half of the cost. So on the revenue side, you would see 50% of the expenses. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. I think we could cut some of that electricity down if we quit making the school zones flash for so long. I know the one on Bellcrest flashes for about uh, an hour before the students are even allowed on the property. They're, they're supposed to be set by a timing, and there's actually permits on them. And, if, and, and the permits are set by the state, so uh, we can look at it, though, and they can come evaluate if, you, if you know, you're saying it's way before there's any children. When my son went to Ingemar Elementary, they told us they did not want him there before five to nine ever. And the and the uh, lights started flashing before eight o'clock. Well, like <laughs> kids aren't even allowed here for an hour. I believe that that's prescribed. Mark, you're shaking your head. Is that true? I'm correct on that. And that sets the timing based on arrival of not only the elementary school students, but they also transfer buses there for high school and, and uh, Carson. Yeah, so those, those kids started to show up there. They, they actually, bus picks them up. That's at, at the middle, though, isn't it? They don't do it at the elementary. They do it, both. Do it at the elementary. Yeah. I saw they, them at they the get there before 5 to 9. The buses do. Well, this was maybe now, but when Tommy was going, it was, I think it was 5 to 9. They didn't want them on the property. Well, our kids I know it was over an hour before. Our kids always before 5 to 9. Any time between 8.30. Right. 30 and 9 o'clock or quarter to 9. Well, I know it comes on quite a bit before they're allowed there, but okay, if it's dot does it anyhow. Well, any other comment regarding the public safety budget, public safety and the school, school crossing guards? Did we give the nod then to that interview? Did, every, did we... It seemed like everybody was quiet. Did we give the nod to that? I thought to, we did. Okay, yes. Ralph? Well, yeah, I, yes. I don't think we explicitly did, but we I think didn't. we I did. I didn't no, think we, we did either. I don't so, think so. so let, I think let us do so. Well, I'd say so Ralph says yes, I say yes. Well, I say yes. Say yes. Okay, yes. yes here. Everyone but Jerry has said something. Yes? Well, sure. There you go. Everyone said yes. The, uh, well, I just thought she like has to know. Last, yeah. last, so the schedule will be based on your, your last... Uh, I'm ready to go. Uh, I, well, now that I've heard council's approval for this, I'll, you know, I've already done a preliminary background on the individual. You'll complete that? I'll complete it and dive into it very quickly. And then and just let me know and I'll help yeah, schedule whenever, the interview. Whenever you want to set up. You have background so check to do it, right? It'll be ready by February. Yeah, I already ready? did a preliminary it's ready before on the candidate that you're going Could to be. interview, but He's I'll really ready. dive into it now that I've got the mm -hmm. approval. I mean, it'll be, I'll be right on it. And so basically what I'm saying is, Anytime you're ready to go to interview this individual, thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can do it. Well, when it's an appropriate time, we'll certainly set up that interview. Do we have any other comments uh, regarding the uh, budget items for public safety or school crossing guard? Any comments from the audience? Hearing none, I'll adjourn the Public Safety Committee. Thank you. Didn't you just set that for me? Yes, quarter to nine. That's what time it is. Did it correct itself? It's closer to the eight. I said it. Oh, you said it. Okay. It's 845. Okay. The Public eight. Works Committee will come to order. It's right on. What's the matter with it? Did it just move? Is that what you're saying?
I see the second hand going. The, the, yeah, but I mean the, the hour hand's a little lazy. The hour right? hand is enough where it's supposed to be for the time. <laughs> Report on the 2017 Green Age program, Mark. <laughs> well, wow. I got, actually, there. I have nothing to report about 2017 drainage. We're done with Sloop Road finally. Um, all drainage work will be postponed now until after leaf season is done, and we'll see what the winter brings and perhaps start up on uh, on some new stuff. Right now, if the leaves ever fall, well, they're going to fall Thanksgiving week. <laughs> My crystal ball says that's when they're snow, all coming down. They start then snow turning. like it did one year before. Yeah. I went over the mountains, they're all still up, they're all colorful. Mm -hmm. well, colorful. There's, I was up north. Across Friday. 80, they're still up. That's a Friday, and it, they were either green or brown. There was no color on it. Yep. Yeah. I'm just seeing color over the last few days. Mm -hmm. Bill knows where to go if he wants to see Lee. You want to see colorful leaves, Bill knows where. Mm -hmm. I'll be sure to tell the lady that lives in Brook Park that called me. She'll be happy to hear your drainage program is finished because she was unhappy because that was her shortcut over to 19 when you were holding her up. All right, the paving program. Paving mm -hmm. uh, was completed last Thursday and Friday. Um, <clears throat> It was uh, the half of Sloop Road, <clears throat> half of Sloop Road that uh, we got the drainage done on for this year. Uh, paving's done, temporary lines are down. They're waiting for a little bit warmer day to try to put the thermal plastic down on it. Um, I looked at it this morning in the rain and we accomplished what we wanted to do at, up at the Willoughby intersection. There's no water coming out across the road anymore. And uh, we took care of some other drainage problems down at the bottom as we were coming through. But, El Grande finished that. Uh, they also, uh, we had a, a fairly significant drainage project that we did on Shady Oaks over earlier this year. They got over and, and repaved that area and paved uh, Ring Eisen Road where MTSA had a, a uh, force main that they put in through the summer. And the last work that they did was in the stockyard out back to, <coughs> to do some regrading uh, and paving <coughs> so that we can get the water from parking lot area and water from the uh, uh, salt shed area into the filtration ponds that we built in the back. So uh, at this point, all the paving is completed for this year and we're waiting to do final measurements. The final bill will be in maybe this week yet. How does Montgomery Road coming? I've not heard any more about it. We've not, I've not seen any more water issues over there recently. Um, I don't know if, if they finally hit something right up on top and cut that spring off or what, but I've not seen any water over there. And I was by there today since it rained and that's when it's coming when it rains. Uh, there was no water coming up out of the road today. It has been intermittent. I've seen that when I have been. I've, yeah. I've taken pictures. Tom, sometimes I've seen it when it rains, it comes up. Some other times, no. Mark, <coughs> I know you've, you've had to miss some time. Uh, you all know. Uh, work over the last month or so. And uh, but, uh, you're, uh, I don't know if you're aware that the, maybe you probably are, that Westview Water is testing again to see if there's a water leak. Yes, I've, I've requested that several times. And Thank you. I, I, every time I've called down and requested it, they've come up and checked all the lines. So far, they did find some, some uh, noise on the line, as they describe it, which apparently the unit that they use picks up sound of uh, water running through the pipe and somehow also can differentiate between water running through the pipe and water leaking out of the pipe. Yeah. Uh, over there, and they've not been able to find anything. So. We don't. We don't want any water problems over there. We worked too hard to get them done. No, I. I think uh, our our idea, the plan that we've been kicking around to run some additional pipe behind the curb, is probably going to be the only way that we can hopefully catch and contain all that water. But since we can't find out where that water is coming from. It's going to, it could be very difficult to try to contain it. There's an awful lot of wet weather springs there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, that's been a problem for 40 years. Mm -hmm. I've addressed it. And we're still addressing it. While we're on the uh, 
subject of the repaving, did you happen to be able to take care of the lady on Sloop Road with the rocks in her, her front yard? Did they move the rocks from her yard? And Just down at the bottom. Yeah. <clears throat> we, we replaced all that French drain that was down there. Okay. And it's been, she it's apparently has some and kind of rocks in her yard. Does she want or the, the that she, Yes, she had there. <clears throat> and she called me and they, they had just started on the road and I tried to explain to her that they were still working on it. They couldn't put the rocks back till they were finished. But I didn't know. Were these decorative rocks? Uh, I presume that's what she thought they were. Jim, uh, in your absence, again, when you were off, uh, Jim Betterly had been working on that. And okay. Was that taken care of? I, I didn't hear the final answer because, as you said, we, did, we just finished the paving. Um, we, if they are decorative, they don't go back any closer than three feet from the road because okay. they are a hazard otherwise. So at, when it's paving time, that's when people's rocks move back. And we never heard from her when she said she was going to the emergency room for her no, hands. she was just okay. feeling lowly at she that was, moment. Okay. Letting off some steam. Anything else for Mark before we move into the budget? Just one question, what Toby just said. When people, there's a couple places, and this is, this is Hampton Township, down toward South Monitor. That's the only place I can, where Montour, rather, from where I live, up on the hill. There are, there are several places where there are large, and I mean pretty substantial, uh, Rocks, and I don't think that I don't think they're. Well, I, I'd be surprised if there's three feet between those rocks. And I don't know if Hampton is a three. Yeah, foot I don't. Know, that's well. I realize that's what I said at the beginning. I don't know what that's. You talking about going up Wildwood? No. Montour. No. Montour, Montour comes out into Wildwood. Well, but, but it's not Montour. What's the street? Grandeur, I guess it is coming up. Yeah. Grandeur. Grandeur all the way up. Yeah. Price. I think there's some large decorative. Yeah. That, older. Well, well, I think they have them there to keep people from driving into the driving river. into that yeah. big uh, hole. And what it amounts to is it becomes a kind of a chase thing, you know. We, we pave, we push rocks back. Rocks, rocks yeah. creep back out, we come back. It's sort of an instant. So the three feet is from the edge of the pavement? Yeah, back of the curb. Or back of the edge of the pavement. There's no curb. Because we, you know, we own beyond. The we own beyond, but we have, you know, we, we, the whole, the whole it's, it's a practical thing. When Mark's guys plow. Oh, I know a couple places up yeah, there. Well, there's some a foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sometimes the rocks get pushed, and we don't want to have to be nicking a plow either, or jerking a plow because somebody has a huge rock out there. It, it, it works itself out generally, but people do. There's rock creep that takes place. Mm -hmm. Budget review four twelve. Or maintenance of the ambulance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jerry, I'll just, while well, Mark's going to clear his throat there, I can, I can see him clearing his that, That's a pass through, so whatever uh, maintenance we do for the uh, ambulance, ambulance vehicles, they, and they buy their fuel here. We'll just pass it. The workman's compensation insurance for volunteer clerical support? Yeah. I, the, on last year's budget, I looked in the statement and it said for volunteer EMS and paramedics. There's a there's a blanket charge. Right now it's hovering around $2,400 mm -hmm. that the state uh, charges for uh, a workers' comp force. Now that's a good point because I do believe their last volunteer retired. Right, Mark? Yes. Mark was their last bona fide volunteer. That's a, uh, that's a great point to see. We, and we do our uh, workers' comp insurance uh, for, the, for the EMS through us, Breach. We checked uh, with the Thank ambulance you. authority. Um, they no longer have volunteer EMTs, but they do have volunteer clerical staff. So we have to keep this and insurance we do keep because the of that? Workers' comp for the volunteer clerical staff, yeah. And that's the same rate. Why don't we, if we can, I don't know if there's any diff, I don't think, it's a batch rate, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's a batch rate. It doesn't, surprisingly, it doesn't vary. It doesn't matter if they have 20 volunteers or two or three clerical ones, huh? Okay. Always stays the same price? It's a, it is a flat rate. Yeah. How many do they have? Do we know? 
That I don't know. Uh, we could certainly get an answer for that pretty quickly. <coughs> but uh, we just, I was surprised because I knew that it had been mentioned that there were no more e EMTs, volunteer EMTs, so we contacted them. They said, oh, we've got volunteer club on staff. So the good number to know would be if it ever be for, for this purpose anyway it becomes zero. I mean I'm sure they like having volunteers to help them. So right. okay. Let's go to four thirty. <coughs> Public Works Administration. I think uh, most of the cover plate there is, is uh, Fairly self-explanatory. Um, we could get down to a very bottom the last paragraph. Just wanted to run through a little bit on uh, <coughs> staffing. Which we are. Normally, the department has 22. Uh, I have rumors next door that there may be three retiring at the end of the year, and we are down one person that we haven't replaced. So um, we will more than likely be advertising for that. At least one, one position fairly quickly. Uh, as far as the vehicles, um, we are going to replace truck five this year. Um, it's, it is hanging by a thread at this point, so it has to go. And the uh, $185 price tag on there is current uh, bid numbers from CoStars and, and a couple other places that I, I can uh, piggyback on. So that's a good number. Um, that may change come spring, so. Once council has approved the budget, I'd sure like to get an order out for the chassis and try to get it in place uh, before prices go up anymore. Um, the 125,000 that's in there for the Massey Ferguson Boomer, uh, we've we've within the last 18 months, I think, uh, we put a new clutch in it for I believe the third or fourth time. Uh, the tractor is older and it's just time to replace it. However. Having said that, I would also like to start looking into, uh, rather than that boom mower uh, spraying pre-emergent in the spring to try to cut down on, on the weeds on the side of the road, there are a number of environmentally safe uh, chemicals that are out there that can be used to control weed and, and grass growth alongside the road. Um, certainly much less time consuming and a whole lot cheaper than buying another tractor with a boom mower on it and um, the tractor just doesn't, he can't do more than a mile or so a day. So when we're thinking about trying to trim back, I believe we have almost 20 miles of more or less unmaintained areas on roads that we send that tractor out to cut grass. Um, I did get a price uh, of a ballpark without them actually coming out looking at anything. Uh, runs around $500 per mile to spray. Uh, and they recommend two sprays at least during the year, so we are talking about a $1,000 uh, spray. What is it? It's, it's about $500. What is it called? What is the chemical called? Oh, I don't have a chemical name. It's, it's a, there's a number of companies out there that contract with the county and contract with PennDOT, and they will spray pre-emergent which would go on early in the spring before anything really starts to sprout. Did you say shake hog too to me when you were shake hog did not have a bit. They did not. Have then it ends up being bare ground. No, you can uh, you can selectively eliminate, and what we would probably keep are there any grass that's growing there, but kill off any other, particularly the invasive species. Like we've got knotweed everywhere around here, and you can't stop it. There's, there is a method that can be used to stop it, but you've got to cut it down flush and then spray it with weed killer and it's going to grow again and then you cut it the second time and spray it again and that usually takes care of it. But it, you know, it, it's probably the worst place is right up on top of the hill here on Grubbs Road. We, we cut that and it grows back and, and um, it, takes, it, it just comes back quickly. That stuff's extremely invasive and so uh, the more invasive, the more it takes to kill it off. But um, again, there are several companies that contract with the state and the county, and if we were going to look into that kind of a program, then I'd sit down with them and discuss what we want to do, 
and they'll tell me then what chemicals they would they would recommend using. But from what I understand, none of the chemicals that they use is environment, environmentally hard, harmful. So you know you don't have to worry about getting into the streams or uh, kids getting into it or anything like that. It's all uh, appropriately biodegradable and safe. Can we get some information on it? Right, I'd like to know the chemical awesome. itself. Awesome. So the $1,000, they would do all the areas in the town or each? No, it's, it's about $500 a mile. A mile. Oh, right, a mile. so it's $5,000. Yeah. So, yeah, we, it would be five to $6,000 to cover the same areas that we use the boom motor on right now. It, Mark, is, is doing it selectively uh, aiming at the growth at, at the corners something that, that's feasible? As opposed to going, I'll, I'll give you an example. Going up and down Babcock Boulevard, say starting at North Villa Drive, there's a lot of growth along the going down on the right hand side of the road. But, along Babcock. Yeah, along Babcock. That's that's not ours. That's state. Oh, that's <clears throat> that's Pendot. Okay. And um, they don't Pendot, see Pendot only cuts in large areas. They don't do roadside <clears throat> trimming the way we do. They spray everything. Well, what, I, what I was creeping up on suggesting was, was dealing. I, I realized it was Pendot, but if, if you just get the get the, the intersection area, then you, then when you're trying to get out of a turn, turning it out of a street, you can at least at least your vision's not blocked by the. Well, by you the have to, one thing I would point out in that particular scenario, yeah. it's usually property owner planted yeah, homeowner. I got you. Bushes that that are blocking vision, right. that's not something that we'd be spraying. Those have to be physically cut back and that requires notif notice given right. to the property owner to get it cut back or we will do it. Okay. Uh, the other, the last item there is, uh, well, two more items there. The foreman's pickup trucks are all, uh, they're both 2010 versions. They're upwards, I guess, of uh, around 90,000 miles on them. And so they're, they're uh, due for replacement next year. They'll be eight years old. And lastly, we have a walk behind saw that we used to saw cut prior to drainage work. Um, the unit that's there is, is uh, probably 10 years at least, if not older. And um, parts are still available for it, but the whole unit itself is getting loose and, and ready to need some major work, and I, I don't want to spend the money on trying to fix something that old. This is an asphalt saw? Yes. Asphalt and concrete, we use it for both. Just change the blade and cut what you want to cut. Just for your information, the uh, walk behind saw is not under machinery, it's under vehicles? It's, it's under the uh, 740 account. Uh, well, it just had... Well, that is correct. Thank you. Yeah, we'll that. And both Foreman trucks will have snow plows? Yes. Four-wheel drive pickups. We'll be put the snow plows. <clears throat> Anything else on page 51, Mark? I have nothing else there. Four thirty one. Street clean. Okay, four thirty one to street clean. Um, we have a machine over there which we have done our best to try to work two complete sweepings a year uh, as per DEP's kind of request. Um, it doesn't work real well because with a lot of drainage work and whatnot going on, I wind up without having somebody to put in the running machine. So uh, we do one complete sweep in the spring, and then like after some of these heavy rains, there's been some stuff washed out on the roads. We'll pick those selected spots and send the machine back out to sweep. So other than that, there's, uh, you know, the wages in there are for the, the operator, and um, everything else in this one pretty uh, if you have any questions. 433 to 
We're going to do 432 next. No, nice control. Oh, yes. Um, don't want to forget that one. I don't know if you all have seen the so-called extended forecast for the winter, but uh, they are talking around four feet of snow this year, but um, warmer temperatures. So we may have another winter similar to what we had last year, I guess. I'm hoping. Uh, but to that end, um, there is money in there. Uh, if you look at the top of page 57, um, we have again this year two salt contracts, one with PennDOT, one with COG. <clears throat> For the total, uh, there's two numbers of uh, one of 4,000 tons and the other 5,000. That is the, uh, in, in both contracts, what's termed 100% salt purchase. We can, we can purchase less than that, or if we need, need to, we can purchase more. But the numbers that are in the budget that uh, 593,000 uh, is for that 9,000 tons of salt. Is that how much we got last year? Yes. How much do we have left? Right now the building is full. And the building holds Which approximately 5,600 tons. And we're talking about another 9,000? Another 9,000. Actually last year we didn't buy 9,000. Yeah, we did. It's, and again, on... One of them, I think it's the, I think it's the state, or the, I think it's the PennDOT contract. The minimum number, or the minimum percentage of that 100% is 60. So rather than, uh, rather than 5,000 tons, we have to buy 3,000. And on the other one, the minimum is, is 80%, uh, I think. And, um, so we have to, it's, that's 3,200. So that 9,000 tons is actually closer to 7,200. 62. That we have to buy. And 7,200, if, if you look through all the snow and ice reports forever and ever, it hits right around 7,000 to 7,500 tons that we use every year. So we'll use the 5,600 that's in the building. We'll order more salt and fill the building back up at the end of the winter and hopefully will be less than 9,000 tons that we have to buy. It's also a maximum before the price yeah, becomes negotiable. Yeah, the, the uh, COG bid, I think, is 120%, 120. and the state is 140, I think. I think it still is. So if worst case winter, worst case scenario, we can purchase all that additional salt and, and still be at the same price. And but so last year we had 9,000 total? And we let we end up with a remainder of five thousand. No, we had we, we less shaking than his head no more. Yeah, we're projecting actual spending shares last uh, this year, two thousand seventeen, at two hundred ninety seven thousand. So that's half of what we're budgeted. No, 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 of the salt. Of the right. Yeah. Salt. Right, but if we if we had nine thousand tons total last year. Is that what you're saying? Was you 100, five, if we well, consumed 100 percent of what we, but we have 5,600 remaining. Not right. remaining. We bought 5,600. <coughs> we bought. We have the off. shed. Put 5,600 in the shed at the end of the season. And then I don't have with me right now what the. Well, maybe I do. So we had 9,000 that we used, and then it plus 5,600. Right. Mm, don't think we oh. used nine. How much do we? Oh, I don't know. I'm just trying to. I'm. I'm worse than right, this too. I'm like trying to figure out how. To, it how sounds to me like we bought <coughs> nine thousand tons last year. We have fifty six hundred tons left, and we're talking about buying nine thousand more tons. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have fourteen thousand five hundred tons this year. We're only no, projecting we're that we're going to spend two hundred ninety five thousand dollars this year on salt, which is half of what we budgeted. So we're not projecting that we're going to buy nine thousand tons this year. Right, but I'm yeah, saying last year we bought nine. We had nine thousand tons total. You mean in seventeen or See, this, year. This, this year? Yeah, this past year it was in six. Well, 15, six, or sixteen, seventeen. Yeah, you got to watch because we do buy some each. You know, it's spring. right. But I'm it's saying if we had nine thousand right. tons, I mean, and we ended up with fifty six hundred remaining, we buy nine thousand no, tons yeah, again, no, and we end no, up no, with no, the no, same no, winner. Right. No, he wants to know how many salt. No, what happened? find that number out for what we do. I'm just concerned that we end up with 10,000 tons of salt no, at the end no, of the no. year. Do we need to buy as much as we're buying? Is yes. the bottom line. Yes. Even if we have another winter like last winter, because we had extra salt last winter, remember? Because we were in the store in other places. Right. 
And but so we, we, we didn't have to do that. That we it turned out fine. Yeah, we, we, we kind of put the warning out. Right, but we don't want to have to go through that again. Well, you never know. We can no, have a super they, mild winter, so you might have to pay for some storage. You can't if we if you budget too little. Right, you dig around. I don't want to have another Christmas Eve when Mark called me up like he did about ten years ago and said, "Boss, I got two hundred tons of salt left out there." So, but but what we have is five thousand tons from the CoStar as a state contract, so we're obligated right. to to buy sixty percent of that three thousand tons, and four thousand tons from the Cog contract, so that's eighty percent of that. That's thirty two hundred. So it's sixty two hundred tons. We are obligated to purchase between now and August 31st of next year. So, we have 5,600 tons in the salt dome right now, or close to it. You know, it's 5,600 max. When well, you always talk to me, Mark, you always say, you can't, you'd have to blow it up to get that yeah. last 300 tons. There's probably 5,300 or 5,600 in there. So when he starts nice whittling, guy. when he starts whittling that down, you're gonna get to about halfway down, then he's gonna start ordering salt from this new order. And then we're going to use some more and whittle it down and it gets some more in. And by the end of the winter, uh, he's going to fill up the rest of the dome. If we don't hit 6,200 by some miracle that we have a really mild winter, then we're going to pay a store of 500 tons or 800 tons or something like that somewhere or cut a deal. The, the salt company has been very benevolent about storing especially small quantities, like I mentioned, like this 500 or 600, 800 tons or something like that. They've stored it for nothing. And, and we don't have them storing anything now. Nope. Okay. We have a couple of the other, commu couple other communities uh, were facing that. I don't know how that turned out for them. But. I just yeah, want to make sure we don't, no, 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 don't want to run out for we, sure. Yeah, but I, we, we just yeah. don't want to run out of salt if we have a bad winter. We, we have to you know, just try to hit a, hit a good target. That's why we got all this history in here. You know, Mark said we might get 48 inches of snow from the latest forecast. Well, lo and behold, that's right, what, but that's 48 inches of winter. snow. On winters, at least the ones that I have experienced in this, seem to be overnight. It's like there's two really big snowfalls, you know, yeah, 12 have, inch, 18 inch snowfalls. Look, historically, over the last 30 years, we have plowed on average only seven times a winter. There's been, there was one time back in 93, 94, we plowed 22 times, and there was one time we plowed, no, two times we plowed once. So the average is seven times we plow. You're right. We get nickel and dime with these quarter inch, half inch, one inch. Size. Right. We have to call out the crew to solve. Right, but those years that we're talking about, like 1994, was a really mild winter. We end up with big snowfall. You know, the, oh, you get 12. You get these big right. But I can't imagine if it's 12 hours, and you get an inch of snow slowly over 12 hours. Do you use more salt than you would? Or the same amount of salt as you would if you got 12 inches of snow in the same time? You use more on the, on the smaller storms. Right. The big storms, we You're plow. plowing off. And once right. it's all start, snow stops, we plow it off, then we salt. That's what I'm expecting this the, year. The smaller personally. storms, um, you, we've been out already where the guys have gone out and salted, let's say, a half inch to an inch of snow on the roads, and they're, they're nearly done. And it snows hard again and covers everything back up. Mm -hmm. And they go back out and do everything a second time. Because there's not enough there to, to hang the steel and, and go out plowing. But there is enough there that the roads are going to be icy. And the only thing you can do then is throw more salt at it and hope that the snow quits. No such thing as a blower. I always thought a blower for light snow would make more sense. A big blower on a truck that just blew it right yeah, off the side of the road. On, on our streets. I mean, you if it was mounted to the left side of the truck and yeah, blew off to the right. Remember, there's a lot of rocks and un, unsightly things out there that a blower is going to pick up and throw right at a house. So, yeah. you, know, you have to be careful with that. Even with the plows on, the guys are, are not supposed to be going over 20 miles an hour. But if it's a slushy snow, there's a lot of weight coming off the end of the plow. And you can see the mailboxes go down just from just from the weight of the slush. Right. So, you know, it's... It, it is easier to plow sometimes because you put the plow on and you go. But when you get these half inch snows and then another half inch and then an inch and then another half inch and like that, every time that happens, you're you're dumping an average of about 200 tons of salt on the road. So, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. Looking on page 50. 
57. Isn't that where we are? We're still in snowmass. Mm -hmm. Yes. 57. Yes. Okay, I'm 57. So it looks like you're getting. We're getting three new snow plows. We're getting two to go on the trucks and then one to go on your broom mower. No. Is that how? You're getting. You're getting a, a snow plow for <coughs> plow and spreader. Yeah. For the new truck five that's coming in. And truck, and that's the dump truck. The dump truck, that's right? Enough. Okay. Right. And then you're getting two. Snow truck. plows for the foreman pickup trucks, right? Yeah, small plows, right. yeah. Right. So it's three. Yep. Right. Okay. Yep. Okay. So we're getting three. That's good. All right. The reason I seem a little confused here is because I'm not seeing what you're seeing where, with where it says three. We're going back to what no, we were talking under, about earlier. There's one here, but two. Yeah. There's one here you, and then two on the other budget. You wanted to budget on 430. 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. The, the plows on, this, on the pickup trucks are... are we buy them that way. The dump trucks, we buy a dump truck, and then we buy a plow separately from somebody else, and we buy a spreader separately from somebody else. And they're, um, the plows on the pickups, our, our threshold for a capital purchase is $5,000. The plows on the pickups are going to be 3500 to 4000 So they're not, they don't have to go into the into the capital program, each? but we do purchase them right with the pickup truck. Is that each? Thirty-five hundred each now. Okay, on to four thirty-three. Traffic control devices. We do have a typo. Uh, the second line under budget objectives uh, that should be forty-five thousand dollars instead of one hundred forty-five. Yep. Under the budget objective part there uh, for 260 under tools, years ago we had a small um, paint spraying machine that we could use to touch up bass car lines and, and uh, do some other crosswalk painting and things like that. Pendon changed most of that in thermal plastic, particularly the, the traffic signal. So when that unit broke down, finally we just didn't bother to replace it. Well, it's, it's now. Um, the bass car lines are a little more prominent and a little more uh, quality or quantity wise, there's more of them around. Um, to get somebody out here to paint them is, has gotten pretty expensive. So uh, with this machine, we can go back to doing things like painting bass car lines and, and touch up on stop bars and things like that at intersections when, when we really need to. Um, and again, we had one years ago, it just when it blew up, we just I walked away from it for a while. But after rethinking it, it's uh, it's come back around to being a good idea to have one here. Yeah, I'm glad you want to do that. That's that one. Uh, street marking. We do have um, uh, applications out, hoping to hear that we were successful in getting some grant money this year or for next year um, on the Green Light Go pro uh, program, uh, which we've got. I think it was 240000 or something like that that, uh, that we requested. Uh, and that's the one that is a matching. So we've got to put 20%, I think it is. Yeah, that's what the 50200 is there. Yeah, so that's that's what that number is all about. Um, and the other one, the Arley Grant. That's in, that's in Fund 18. Is that in Fund 18? Yeah, so this one is, is primarily at traffic signals to be used at traffic signals to redo the crosswalks and the stop bars and any other lines that are required on our um, traffic signal permit. So that's the, the green light go. If we get it, we can go out and do all of the lines at once and get them all done. Uh, we have done some this year because we had anticipated uh, the grant last year and, and wound up not getting it. So we. We did some stuff that had to be done. If the grant goes through, then we get everything done next year. I have to say that when I saw who, who was awarded the Green Light Go uh, money, I, I reported this to Council back in April or May, one of those two months, and uh, most of the money went out east for one thing, and most of it went for intersection, significant intersection upgrades, traffic signals, and in a larger scale. Our, ours is sort of a... I, I, 
hesitate to say it, but I'll say it is a, almost like a bottom feeder project. It, you know, it's it's not really cool, but it, I mean it's important to us because we have a lot of these lines that we'd want to do. And uh, but if if we you know if we get it, we get it. And it, it I, I think our, our chances of success are not that great because it's, it's not a real cool looking project to the, to the folks in, in Harrisburg. So, but we should apply because just in case they got enough. They don't have enough grants from other folks for uh, bigger scale projects. We'll be here to catch it. So under 310, under street markings in the dollar parts on page 60, it says 95200 mm -hmm. And then the correction that we made under the budget objectives was from 145000 to 45000 mm -hmm. So you add the forty five and the 50200 together, it's ninety five two. Where's the 50000 Third line down. Oh, the budget town's objective. share the of the expenses. Right. Okay. And that's if we get that grant. But that's only if we get the grant. That's right. Oh, okay. 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 Now, if we well, don't... let's qualify that, because if we don't get the grant, much as we've done this year, that $50,000, we'll, we're going to need to use that to do some of the intersections and get crosswalks and slot bars repainted. So we're going to use that money it's no matter used. what. Right. Okay. Unfortunately, right. it would only be, be, trying to be yeah, it wouldn't be used, unfortunately it would be seed money. It, it would be great if we can use it to capture 200,000 bucks. Right. But we're going to use it either way. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. I'm not seeing the 50,000. Where are you seeing it? Third line on, right here on page 59, Joanne. Yeah, it's 50, oh, oh, 50, yeah, there. Okay. Okay. Town share. Yeah. That's, what, uh, that's what I couldn't figure yeah, out where I that was either. The 50. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, that page all right? Yep. All right. Uh, I'm going to pass over the, the 434 street lighting because that's <laughs> not much there to talk about. Yeah. Well, we have one street light, is that one? It's on. Thompson Run. Red that's Angel Street. And why? That's, that's, before, that's before, that's in the... Why that's do we have from, one street light? That's from BC. Oh, that's from BC. Which one? Why do we only have one street light in all township? And why do we even have it if we only have one? We have a street light at we have a street light at the, the, the school district picks that tab up. We don't have that. We don't have no, that anymore. I checked our, our no. Regis 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 can you give it a shout out here, Jerry? That street light we're actually reimbursed by the Great Book Association for it. Yeah, this one, yeah. Reimbursed, yeah. Yeah. This four hundred dollar street light. It's a pass through. And we get four hundred dollars in revenue. From the Great Brook Association for that light. So we they, they looked at putting it in their name, but it was cost prohibitive, quite frankly, to switch it from the town's name to Great Brook's name. So we continue paying for it, and then they reimburse us. Okay. Well, it was just a goodwill gesture, so apparently, watch. decades ago. It's all <laughs> They asked for it. It'd be nice for zero there, but we can't. We, no, I know. We don't like that. We used to have a street lighting district in Ingemar from Ingemar Road all the way through Ingemar. Uh, yep. Storm sewers. Okay. 437. Uh, 436, Six. the storm sewers and drains. <laughs> Stop jumping ahead. Um, there, there's not a whole lot there. This is <coughs> under some of the new accounting, accounting procedures. This is uh, basically for maintenance work. Um, if the guys have to go out and, and do some minor repairs on catch basins, manholes, Small pipe work, uh, I believe we're looking at under 5,000 reach rate. That's when it jumps over to the fund 18. So, this is all just maintenance, maintenance kind of work. Um, you'll see the numbers have been pretty steady over the years because most of the drainage work goes under the fund 18 capital improvements. Okay, uh, 437. You all have questions on there. Um, again, here, this is pretty much uh, self-explanatory, except under the budgets, under 740, um, the mechanics have requested a machine that will crimp and manufacture hydraulic hoses. There were a number of people in the area that we could go to to get hydraulic hoses manufactured for us. Uh, all but one of those has kind of gone out of business or, or changed their business line or whatever so that uh, if 
we have a truck down in the middle of a snowstorm and we have to wait two days for a hydraulic hose um, and that doesn't get that truck back on the road. If we buy the machine and have it in house, uh, the guys can, whenever a hose goes, they can they can manufacture a new hose on site and get the truck or, or back hose out on the road. So that's um, 5,000. That's 5,000. Yep. Otherwise, the rest of it's pretty much regular expenditures. And you might notice too that we're kind of assuming the possibility of a 10% increase in the cost of fuel for next year. So that's reflected in there also. Page 68, uh, 438. Maintenance and repairs, again here, this is maintenance. This is when I send the crews out to patch potholes or clean debris off of catch basins. Um, anything that's kind of a minor nature like that uh, gets charged under here. Now when Mark put this uh, together as an alternative, uh, you were talking about a trial program. Mark, that's why it's showing on page 69 under roadside spraying account 370. It's five thousand dollars. If we end up, uh, I suggested to Mark that we don't buy. Obviously, we don't buy the large piece of equipment early in the year. Uh, we, we explore. We council, need to find out what we're spraying before right, we council, spray. Yeah, council and the staff are happy with what we're spraying, so we know we're not hurting anybody or anything. And then, other than killing some weeds, or what people you know perceive as weeds. So uh, then, and, and make, make it safe because you know, some of that stuff grows big and fast and, and with the rain we have. However, so I would say we would probably want to up this amount, this 5,000, from just a, a, a trial program. We're gonna, I think we should assume that we're going to find some, something that we're going to apply that's going to be safe. We should up this and then uh, hopefully not have to spend 125,000 at all and not buy a boom bomber for 125,000. Oh, for the mower. Yep, the mower. Oh, we oh, talked about that. Oh, that's a good idea. No. <laughs> that's a good idea. Well, I understand what he's saying. I just also that's understand what the possible problems could be of spraying well, we'll get a, we'll get 20 a miles I mean, of road. We're going to investigate. I was going to say, could you research on this? Right. right. You, you can squeeze a little bit of life out early next spring out of the boom mower we have before it's ready to give up the ghost. Mm -hmm. Okay. He does that. We're, we're, we're scouting out for the best program we can find. We find a good program. I, just, I think we have a little safety valve here for money because by putting that money in as that safety valve, I'm hoping we're going to say, Mark, Mark started going over this budget with me when he was doing his submittal. He said, I'd like to not have a boom more, any, boom more anymore. But a lot of maintenance, we really don't. I'd rather not have that, but that's what we're going to do then. It's going to cost us $125,000 to replace it. Okay, that's good. Can't make a decision. And Penn Lodge's been using that yes, system yeah. for years. Every time you go around, you see sign, do not spray, spray here, right. spray here, do not spray, spray. They've been using that same chemical for years. I don't see any. Well, in the places that would be sprayed on this are one. not, they're not going to be adjacent to somebody's front yard where right. the kids and the dogs are going to play. It's going but, to be, you know, the Rhineman roads and the Reichhold roads where um, there are streams. Open areas, let's call it. And streams. Mm -hmm. And we're not interested in harming invertebrates or any other creatures that are in streams. Seriously. I'm I mean, looking not. through here, it's a, this knotweed in particular is a miserable well, it is. We have a plan to get rid of. We have a protocol we got from uh, Andy Banfield that gave us uh, from the Penn State Extension, uh, Extension Service, which Mark <coughs> referred to earlier. And that's, you know, you got to cut it, you got to kill it, you got to cut it again because it doesn't die in the first whack and it usually dies in a second whack and then you have to keep after it and keep keep spraying. Because not weed is, you can see how fast it grows and how sturdy it is. And it just I assume really, that's the crap that grows all along the, looks if like you're leaving weed. here going towards in, or 19 on Ingmar Road on that whole left side of the hill, it's... Well, if you look out the window and, yeah, and you can see here. I don't here. think there's look much along... I have. I've oh, got exactly. pictures of it. If, if you want to see any, just ride up the hill on Grubbs and drive past Kim's house and about 100 yards or so up the road from there, there's there's two very large patches of it. It looks bed. like this. It says uh, the most common control is something called gypsum, 
Gyps of Fate, Gyps of Saint Herbicide. G L Y P O S A T E. There's a heck of a lot of it out here along Pine Creek too. <clears throat> Mark, what does curbing streets, our current policy of curbing streets in the town reduces shoulder repair to? It's just simply, um, right now there's one one town maintained road over in Ingemar that does not have curbs on it. Every other road has the asphalt wedge curb. The, the yeah, road comes over and then the curb, the, the oh, jump, so it's it just a little wedge. wedge. The curb's just the little edge right. on the end. Okay. It's not like a big square oh, no, thing. No. Oh, okay. No. okay. You're thinking the, the big square one's commercial yeah. or a blazer drive. Corporate. That's a commercial spec. Okay. Um, Corporate all of our other roads just have the, it's a foot wide and three to four inches high. That's the asphalt curb that we put on. Okay. Thanks. Okay. 446, real quickly, uh, stormwater management and flood control. Um, this has money in it for uh, our guys. Once again, this is a maintenance thing rather than the major massive product projects. Um, our guys go out and uh, <coughs> maybe cut some grass in, in some of the ponds or remove some debris from a pond or something like that. That all gets charged in here. You know, it's also, uh, Mark, uh, the uh, under engineering, uh, we charge uh, charge off the engineering that's used to plan and the, the, uh, the work that we did on the PRP program this year, the work we're going to continue to do with MS4. We have to keep, keep working at uh, some design work and so forth, but uh, it is more of a catch-all. Reach uh, had the revelation, as you can see, budgeting 263,017 and spending 60. He said, you know what? Probably about eight months ago, he came to me and we talked with Mark. He said, you know, this is the work we're doing on these detention facilities to uh, spruce them up sometimes is pretty significant. And it's, it has it, it takes on a capital nature to it, so that's why that that that, part, that part's been shifted to Fund 18, because you can see back in 14 to 15 we spent 179 thousand almost and 100 almost 138 thousand because that's when we were still charging the maintenance program here and the, the new with the new uh, interpretation on capital capital projects what we're doing in, in our these detention facilities is largely capital if it's small we get charged here. Anybody have any questions? Mark, no. Thank you, Mark. Anybody from the audience have any questions? Good job. <laughs> That's not a question. No public comments on that. Hearing none, public works is adjourned. I was tempted to put something in, but it's a status report, but just very briefly, you know, the second phase of the Vincentian Fields project is being worked on, the, the specification <coughs> for the fencing, and uh, I've called for uh, a walk around later this week, hopefully I'm still trying to get commitments from the Vincentian Academy and our engineer and, uh, and the, the guys from the Athletic Association so that we can I have a couple questions for them about the fencing. So when we put the bids out, it's you know it's, it's the right kind of right level of work. Make sure everybody understands because there might be some fencing we can reuse up there too. That's where that stands. I thought it might be a little closer, but we're still a few days away. I'm sure they're having a problem with all the rain too. Done. Well, it's good news and bad news. Uh, with the wet, the temperatures being fairly temperate, right. and the rain, uh, some of the grass is looking really nice up there. And some of it, uh, is, I, I was up there uh, Thursday afternoon, and I, I didn't see any washouts, which was great, too, because rain was not there. But some places it hasn't taken as well, but let's see how it goes. Okay.
guess we're adjourned. Recreation chairman. 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 Recreation chairman.